Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, the next episode you've been all waiting f Yeah, I did that last episode. I got more empathy wine. So, um, oh, by the way, liking the beard? Oh, I probably could move that out of the way now. I don't need that there. That's my mon That's you know, my iPad, my monitor. Um, actually, I'm having some fun. I've got the iPhone 11 Pro going. I've got the DJI Osmo Pocket going. I've also got my Actually, I also got my uh, iPhone 10 using the front-facing camera because it's for the behind-the-scenes uh, show. And um, yeah, if you want to know how I do what I do, check out my new behind-the-scenes channel. Uh, it basically explains how I produce the show. So far, well, by this point, there should be five episodes because I had four last week and I recorded, I'm recording more episodes tonight after this session. So um, last week's episode... Last week of this episode, there was a episode five. Today, there's episode six. So, yeah, depending on when you see this, there'll be six episodes. And uh, last week and this week is all about using an iPhone 11 Pro and a DJI Osmo Pocket as your main camera. And the pluses and minuses to that. So, um, anyway, let's get into Empathy Wine. So, um, this one is uh, the 2018 Empathy. It's a, you know, from California. So, um, uh, the farmer, so you get, like I said last week, you get a farmer's card and, uh, and this farmer's card is like a generic card for all the wines, just same thing with the, the note from the founders. And then you get tasting notes for each wine. So, and I, and I only found one of each of these, one of each of these cards. So my assumption is that, you know, it's kind of funny. This says 2018 rosé blend. But the bottle it says 2019. So who knows? This might be this this might have been the original card from the Chardonnay. I know Chardonnay from the white wine. It's not Chardonnay. I think I said Chardonnay last week. It's not. Hopefully I put a lower third if I said Chardonnay. It's a white, it's a white blend. Um it's just it kind of it, it's it has Chardonnay in it, right? Yeah, but it looks like uh well Chardonnay is the last item on the list. So maybe it's not heavily Chardonnay. It, it does. It was. So I'll just say what it says. Chenin Blanc, Viognier, Albarino, Chardonnay. I don't know if that's, if that's the order of. of uh, I don't know if that's in order of proportion. But it was fairly Chardonnay like. So anyway. Uh, but yeah, you get you get this. But it just has the tasting notes. And um, just like a, a little like blurb. But it doesn't tell you what's in the wine. So. You have to go to the farmer's card. Now for the red, we got all kinds. It's like a kitchen sink right here. Petite Syrah, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Zinfandel, and Tempranillo. So here's why I don't think this is in the order of, of concentration or, or proportions. Petite Syrah, you can make some great Petite Syrahs on their own, but Petite Syrah and Petite Verdot are grapes that are used to add color and flavor and stability to a wine and especially well both of those you don't need a lot to to add some color to the wine um i mean those of us in the industry kind of for lack of a better word joke about california pinots um having some syrah petite syrah or petite verdot but use petite syrah syrah add it to it so you get that really deep red color that Pinot Noir should not have. Just saying. Um, you have other ways of doing it without adding other grapes, but that's the American palate. All right, so um, so my feeling is Petit Strauss is probably not the lead grape. It's probably something like Cab or Zin. The, uh, especially just looking to see who the farmers are. Same farmers as the Rosé. So Marcus uh, Bokish 
and Clay Shannon. So Marcus is in Lodi and Clay is in Lake County. So cab is not prohibitively expensive to make a 20-ish dollar bottle of wine from, I mean, you can get Lake County and Lodi cabs for 20 bucks, 100% cabs, maybe not 100%, but at least 75, 85%. So you can put Lodi and Lake County on there. So um, I'm excited to try it, but yeah, I mean, cool little combination of grapes. So 20 bucks in the website. Uh, last week I talked about how it comes at the, it came out to about $27 um, with tax and shipping. So it's probably going to be very similar to that. And I talked about last week that um, you can do subscription and or single bottle, but realize that the shipping might be a lot for just one bottle. So your best is to buy multiple bottles or sign up for the subscription model. And I also talked about how I don't, I'm not in the subscription model anymore, but again, it has nothing to do with the quality of the wines. It's all about one, how I drink wine. I don't have a, I'm not a subscriber to any wine club um, because I want to have a variety, um, one personally and one professionally, two professionally, uh, and two, it's just another money saving, uh, way to save some money. I can put that money towards buying wines from other parts of the world. All right. So let's get into the wine. Don't swirl. Right? Don't swirl first. All right. So definitely, I mean, you put your nose in the glass and you're like, it's got to be New World, right? I mean, it's luscious and it's really ripe red and black fruit. Um, I suspect that there's some oak treatment of some sort to it. So in the 20-ish dollar range, it's you can have barrels, especially if you're not in Napa. Um, so it's probably barrels. Uh, I, it, it, it does, it's not going to say. It's not going to say anything about barrels, no. I mean, I kind of wish I could get a tech sheet on this stuff. But there's definitely some oak treatment to it. So it could be barrels. It could be chips. It could, it's probably chips or barrels. Maybe both. I don't know. Or it could be stainless steel with oak staves. All kinds of cool ways to get oak into a wine without spending, you know, $1,500 for a French barrel or like $800 for an American barrel. And like 10 years ago when I started this, those prices were a lot lower. Well, not quite. Maybe like 25% lower for each. But yeah, black fruit, mainly blackberry, black cherry, raspberry. Um, just really the berries, all the berries, right? All the colors of red, black, blue even. I would even say there's maybe some blueberry in there, boysenberry, maybe some dewberry. Have you ever had a dewberry? I really haven't. But there's a beer here from Shiner called uh, Weiss and Easy, and it's a Hefeweizen with dewberry in it. It was a little too sweet for me. It was good, but I don't know if I could have more than the one bottle I had. So we got caramel notes, a little bit of fresh potting soil. So not like, not earthy, stinky, mushroomy, earthy, but like really fresh tilled earth, more of a potting soil thing. A little confectionery, like raspberry candy type of thing. Some vanilla, where we talked about the caramel, a touch of toast. So yeah, I mean... Smells good, you know, and, and the grapes that they're using, you got Zinfandel, Tempranillo, Petit Syrah, uh, Syrah, right, and uh, Cab, Syrah, Grenache, no, sorry, that's Rosé, Petit Syrah, Syrah, Cab, Zin, and Tempranillo, especially things like Zin, Syrah, Petit Syrah, and even Cab, you can really get all those, like, really lush fruit, and then you can get it also from Tempranillo, but Tempranillo, a lot of times, gives, gives me... Uh, some earthy components um, that maybe some of the other grapes don't give when they get really ripe from the New World. Because there is a slight bit of bramble to it, which I can also get from Zinfandel.
there's a lot going on here. I'm really trying to analyze it all and try not to forget anything from one sip. It is a smorgasbord of flavors. So all those flavors I'm talking about with the berries, all the berries, all the colors of the berries, and probably some berries I've never had before. Um, there's a little bit of cedar box, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of clove, uh, cinnamon, um, caramel, toast. Um, you know, it's not over the top. So if I was evaluating this wine in a blind, I would say there's there's new oak, but maybe not a lot of new oak. Um, it also could be, again, could be an oak treatment to try to, try to like, you know, keep the cost in a reasonable, reasonable price range. Um, <clears throat> but it's lush. It's full bodied. There's good tannin. Actually, there's a little bit of acid to it. So it's not high acid. And I wouldn't call it, you know, elevated necessarily, but my mouth's still watering. And, you know, these grapes in and of themselves aren't necessarily high acid red grapes, but, you know, you can definitely get some acidity. You can also make sure the wine has acidity, even if the grapes are really, really ripe. And these feel like they're not overly ripe. Uh, there's no raisination to it. There's no overripeness to it. I mean, these feel like they were picked kind of at optimal ripeness, maybe like just as soon as they hit optimal ripeness. So maybe they were trying to retain some acidity. Um, there also could have been some really good diurnal shifts. So there could have been some, you know, retaining sugar and acid, which you can do that with, you know, red and white grapes. It's kind of got like that blueberry pop tart thing going on. Yeah. It's kind of like that. There's a bit of confectionery to it, a little powdered sugar. Um, and these are all good things. I'm not, you know, I'm 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 just kind of riffing that what, what I'm getting off of this. You may get something completely different or not completely different, but you may get some like extra secondary and tertiary like flavors that I'm not getting. Um, it's a really good tasting wine. And I have to say this wine tastes the most expensive of the three. Um, now I did the review of the, of the white blend several months ago. Um, I had another bottle of it two months ago. I saw one more bottle. So I have enough of a memory of that wine. Um, this one tastes the most expensive. Like if you told me this was a 40 or $50 bottle of red, I would believe you. The others I think are very appropriately, for, I think the white, the white blend, I would say, probably could be a $30 or $40 bottle of wine. The rosé, I think, is absolutely priced. $20 is right where it needs to be. Maybe go $25. I didn't say that last week, but I think it's priced appropriately. This wine, I think, is where you're getting the most um, QPR, so quality to price ratio. ratio. Um, it tastes at least two times the money. So $40 to $50-ish dollars. Um, I've had a plenty of these California wines that are in that $40, $50 range. And um, this tastes like it could be that. I'm a big fan of this. And you know me, I'm a huge old world fan, but trust me, if it's a good wine, I don't care where it came from, it could be the most fruit balmy, oaky red wine in the world. But if it's balanced and it tastes good and I think it's well made, I will crush it to whatever. I'll crush the heck out of it. Um, if it's stinky, dirty from old world and unbalanced and poorly made, I'm going to reject it. So just because it's old world doesn't mean it's, it's any better. I think over time, this bottle, like if you open it, really develop. I'm getting some more tartness out of it too. So I, I'd be interested to see what this would do, like being open for a while, decanting it, not because it needs decanting necessarily, but just kind of giving some more surface area to like really do that. All right, so um, I think you should buy the wine. It's not because I'm a super fan of Gary. Uh, it's because I think it's a good wine. It's also a little, you know, I'm getting the, I'm getting the alcohol too. So this is, what is this at? 14.9, okay. So 15% alcohol, it's about right. Yeah, there might be there might be a little there is a little wiggle room on the the label, but 
my experience, if they're giving you a precise number, like 14.9, it's probably that. However, old school tax bracket started at above 14.9. I think it now starts a little bit lower. Um, or yeah, I think the old school tax bracket where you went to a higher tax bracket, it's kind of like your income. Um, 15% and higher, you're taxed higher. So another trick is to go 14.9, even though it might be like 15, 15 and a half percent alcohol. Um, but I'd have to look it up. I think they the TTP dropped that threshold a little bit lower. But either way, when they have that more precise alcohol rather than just like 13, 5, 14, like the, the every five, that's usually what it is. The 0.9s are the ones you kind of go, well, it might be a little bit higher. All right, anyway, I think it's good. It, it kind of came off at the very end a little bit warmer, like I was getting the alcohol, but that's okay. The alcohol gives it a little more sweetness characteristic and gives it more body and gives it more structure and gives it a little more oomph. And it's California wine. It should be a little bit higher in alcohol, especially this kind of wine. All right. Like I said, you should buy it if you like it. All right. So I have links in the description below uh, for empty wines. I also have a link for the PayPal link if you want to send some ducats my way. A little uh, donation there. Uh, if you are interested in the equipment I use, uh, I also have Amazon affiliate links down there for some of the equipment I use. And uh, if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe, and tell your friends about it. This is the best way to support the show. And, uh, and leave, leave me uh, good comments on iTunes. I'm a member of Saul on iTunes. I'm the only that I know of video wine review show on iTunes or the video wine show. I'm the only video wine podcast that does reviews. That's an independent to produced. I say I'm the only one that does reviews on, on, on podcasts. The others are just like shows. Anyway, check it out. We'll see everyone again next time.